Hello everyone. So this is the follow-up one. So now we're going to test all the inputs into our ECU Master Black ECU. So again, got the JZ engine over here. Uh, we've obviously got a coolant temperature sensor hooked up, which is a standard one from Aristo 2JZ GTE. We've got a Bosch intake air temperature sensor. So that one's the one we're going to be using. We've got our pressure sensor, which is 150 PSI pressure sensor. So we've got oil and fuel pressure on this one. So we're going to plug both of them in just to make sure that they are working. So uh, obviously for things like the pressure sensors, I've been through how to set up your inputs and outputs. Go back through that, make sure that your calibration for your fuel and your oil pressure are correct if you have those sensors and you want to test it. So what I've got here is I've got the sort of uh, tune display open and obviously I'm putting fuel pressure and I'm putting oil pressure onto the system so we can actually see it go up and down. Uh, effectively what I'm going to be doing is using compressed air onto the pressure sensor and going through there. So fingers crossed it takes two hands, hopefully I can get that on video for you. But yeah, so that's why we've got this open over here. Now, obviously, in terms of coolant temp and IAT, okay, what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to go to the IAT sensor wizard. I'm just going to choose the Bosch sensor. I'm going to hit OK. Oh, I don't think it's that hot here. And let me just try the other one. Okay, well, anyway, it's, it's, this is just literally for testing. So we'll just pick one of these. Yeah. Let's just pick the other top one that it was before. Anyway, okay, so we're getting a reading on our intake air temperature sensor. So that's fine, it is fluctuating a little bit. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is, if you go into the engine protection, so if you go down to here and you choose the engine protection tab, okay, you have a thing called fail safe, okay. If you open that up, what you've got is this little tab that you're going to have open here. Now the top you've got a map fail safe value. So basically what this is, is it's what it'll default to if the sensor fails, okay? So as, as an example on a Toyota, in standard management ECU, if I disconnect the coolant temperature sensor, it goes to minus 40. Now I'm presuming the reason they're doing that is obviously it'll be in a sense in the map where it's running very, very rich, because remember rich is better than lean, it may save your engine in the event that something goes wrong. So as standard, if you look at this, You'll see the CLT failsafe value is 80 degrees, okay, and the IAT failsafe value is 25 degrees, okay. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is purely for my testing purposes. What I'm going to do is, at the moment, I've got an actual reading from both the coolant temp and the IAT. So, what I'm going to do is on the IAT, I'm going to failsafe that to minus, oh, sorry, I can't do minus 40, can do minus 30 though, and I'm going to do exactly the same for the coolant temp. Okay. And so that's going to be fine. So basically what I'm going to do now is you're going to see the values on here for the coolant temp and the IAT. So effectively all I'm going to do now is I'm going to unplug this and as I do you'll see coolant temp shoots to minus 30. So therefore we know that that is correct and that is working. And we know that it's on the correct wires and everything is fine. Plug that back in, 24, 25 degrees. Okay, so it's actually giving us a reading. It is a warm day today, so I would tend to believe that it could be 25 degrees in here. The one trick with setting up coolant temps on IOTs is if you've got a bone cold stock engine, um, in this case, I haven't really done the calibration properly yet. I just wanted to kind of show you how to test it, but for sanity's sake, you know, if your coolant temp is reading 20 degrees and your IOT is reading 50 degrees, there's something wrong. Um, they would be more or less about the same. Uh, within a few degrees of each other would be absolutely fine. Obviously, bearing in mind, a coolant temp sensor may very well be, you know, in the coolant system. In our case, it's in open air, but it's in the coolant system. Um, and there may be sort of a, a temperature differential between the actual intake air temperature sensor and that. So, yeah, that's just a little sanity check for you guys when you are doing it. If you see weird values like that, you know, there, there's got to be something wrong there. So what I'm going to do now is we're just going to go to our intake air temperature sensor. I'm going to unplug that. And lo and behold, you've got minus 30. Okay. Now obviously this is called check engine light. If you've done what we've done and actually set up the check engine light to read 
um, if there's an IAT failure or something along those lines. So that'll also cause a check engine light. But yeah, so you can use the values that they put as standard, or if you want, you can set it to say minus 30 or something like that. So there's a possibility, you know, when you've got your sort of cold start and everything set up um, and so on and so forth. So if you set it to say minus 30, it'll just run really, really rich, um, which maybe you want, maybe you don't. Maybe set it to 80 degrees so it'll run like it's absolutely normal and everything is fine. Uh, same with the IAT, you can set it at 20 degrees. You can set it at minus 30, it'll run a bit richer um, when your IAT compensation tables are set up by your tuner, etc. So that's really up to you guys. You decide you know, what you wanna do and go from there, okay? So we know the coolant temp works, we know the intake air temperature works, we know that when we've unplugged them actually at their connector that we're getting the correct values on the screen. So we're happy with that. So what I'm gonna try and do now is I'm gonna try and do the pressure sensors. So, as you can see, we've got oil pressure and fuel pressure there, both showing zero bar, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna push this pipe onto here. Now I have got my compressor set to about 60 PSI. Okay, so hence why I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna basically have to hold it in there, but yeah, so here's our oil connector. And we're just gonna plug it straight into there. Okay. Oh, help if I did it in the correct place. I'm gonna do this single-handedly. Not the easiest job in the world. Right, so what I'm gonna to have to do is, I am, am I gonna be able to do this with that? Let me just see what I can do here. Hang on. Okay. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do the fuel one, and I'm gonna have to get myself a helper for the other one, because the fuel one is right here by the PC. So just give me a second while I get that all connected up. Okay, so in this case, we've got a little expansion harness at the back here. So there's our fuel pressure over there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna plug that into there. Okay. Now obviously I've set everything up on mine. So you're gonna see obviously reading zero bar on the fuel pressure. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to lean this against the table and I'm going to press it. And there's two all the way up. Okay. And obviously we're happy because it's actually showing under the fuel pressure that it's working. Okay. So, again, we're happy with that. Um, I just do it as a sanity check. It's just to make sure, especially if you've got like oil and fuel pressure. All right, I'm not gonna bother with the oil pressure. I, I know it works, I've tested it. It's just to, so you guys can actually physically see. So, I like to do this just as a sanity check just to make sure it works. Because the thing is, you know, if you've got no oil pressure and you're sort of cranking and cranking, 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 and everything is sort of, you know, showing zero bar and you think, oh, I've got no oil pressure, it may just be the sense that's at fault. So, you know, quick little test. I don't know, everyone's got a compressor. Um, but even I've just used, basically just put it to my lips and blown. You don't get a lot of pressure, but at least you get something. So you can actually see the, the bar rising up. The other thing I wanted to let you know is, um, it depends on what you prefer. Um, I prefer to use bar, but that's because I grew up in a country where that's what we used to use, kilowatts and bar. Um, but what you can do is if you go into tools, one, two, three, four. Fifth one down is called configuration. And inside here, right at the top, you can change the units. So you can go to Imperial if you want, click on OK, and we've got PSI. Now, if you do that, as you can clearly see, it changes everything around. So now your map sensor is reading in PSI rather than uh, KPA. So if I go back to tools, configuration, metric, and we're back at KPA. So again, this is this is all a preference thing. Maybe you prefer to read it in PSI, um, you know, in terms of your map sense and so on. So it's just let you know that the option is there. You know, if you guys want to use imperial measurements, absolutely no problem at all. And I'll actually just check, make sure that the temperature also goes to Fahrenheit. Yeah, goes to Fahrenheit. So if you're in America and you're more happy with Fahrenheit, 
um, then yeah, then you can change these values around. So you, you're not stuck there. You don't actually need to um, to stick with the uh, metric measurements. That's completely down to you guys. You guys decide exactly what you want to do. Okay. Um, so that's that. So hopefully that helps. Um, obviously, uh, I've not gone through every single sensor, but I'm just trying to give you guys like a, you know a reasonable thing that I would go through. Uh, obviously, for the drive-by-wire, like the TPS and all that type of jazz, uh, I've done that in the drive-by-wire video, so I'm not going to go through and test that as well. Um, we've tested all the outputs, so we're happy with that. So effectively, if you're at this stage now, so you, you, you've installed the software, you've updated the firmware, you set up all your inputs and outputs, or if you got it from us, you've just double-checked everything against the, the, the information that we give you. Um, you've tested your outputs, you've tested your inputs, you're happy that everything is set up on the ECU correctly. The next step now is going to be actually checking the uh, base timing. So that'll be the next video that's coming up now is how to check the base timing. Um, obviously this is ECU master specific, but I'm going to go through some generic stuff that applies to everything. So yeah, stick around for that. And like I said, if there's anything else about testing centers, sensors that you want to know, if there's anything else about ECU master products you want to know, if there's anything specifically you know that you want to know about ECU master how do I do this how do I do that please feel free drop a comment down uh, message on our page if we don't know we'll get the answer for you and we'll do a video and we'll explain exactly how it works all right but thanks for watching guys and we'll see you later bye bye